central venous catheter insertion. Indications include hypovolemia, nutrition, monitoring and venous access. Determining the insertion site must take into account several important aspects of the operator and the patient. No line should be placed without adequate supervision if the operator is not comfortable with the technique. Patient factors such as body habitus, previous site placement, or known DVT may also influence the insertion site. Of course, coagulopathy must always be considered. The CDC recommends the subclavian site for insertion because of its decreased risk for infection. Complications include pneumothorax, arterial puncture, and improper positioning. We will describe the technique for subclavian central venous catheter placement. The landmarks for subclavian line placement are the point on the clavicle that is two-thirds from the sternal notch to the shoulder. This area may also be noted by finding the deltopectoral groove in between the pectoralis major and the deltoid muscles. It is in this groove that the cephalic vein runs and empties into the subclavian vein. After noting the insertion landmarks, the area is prepped and draped in sterile fashion. The modified Seldinger technique threading the catheter over a guide wire is used in almost all central venous catheter insertions. Again noting the insertion landmarks, the area of insertion is anesthetized at the skin level and if possible, the deep subcutaneous area and the periosteum of the clavicle are anesthetized as well. The introducer needle is inserted two to three finger breaths below the clavicle at the previously identified insertion site. The needle is not aimed posteriorly Instead, a needle is inserted and aimed at the clavicle, but the thumb of the opposite hand is used to depress the needle down while maintaining a horizontal orientation. The needle is advanced until the clavicle has been encountered. After gently touching the clavicle, the needle is pulled back and further downward pressure is applied as the needle is advanced just below the clavicle. While this is being done, constant negative pressure is maintained in the syringe and a flash of blood in the syringe indicates the vein has been entered. If no flash of blood is encountered, the needle is slowly withdrawn again while maintaining negative pressure in the syringe as the vein is often encountered while withdrawing the syringe. If this is unsuccessful, repeated passes are attempted with slight changes in the orientation of the needle to find the vein. After accessing the vein, the syringe is removed and the backflow of the blood is observed. If high pressure pulsatile blood is noted, arterial puncture may have occurred. In this case, the needle is withdrawn and pressure is held for one to two minutes before the next attempt. If multiple attempts are unsuccessful, it is often wise to try another entry site. Please remember that before switching to another side of the chest or neck for a second attempt, a chest x-ray should be obtained to rule out a pneumothorax on the side of the previous attempt. Of course, certain emergent conditions may preclude this. After successful cannulation of the vein, the guide wire is then advanced through the needle into the vein. At this point, cardiac monitoring with an audible EKG tone is essential to note the development of any arrhythmia. An increase in PVCs may occur and denote the presence of the guide wire in the heart. If an unstable rhythm should develop, the wire should be immediately withdrawn and treatment instituted if necessary, although the arrhythmia frequently disappears when the wire is withdrawn. Once the guide wire has been advanced almost completely, the needle is carefully removed. A number 11 scalpel is then used to make a stab incision in the skin immediately adjacent to the wire. The dilator is then used to dilate the track where the catheter will be placed. There will be increased bleeding after dilating, so gentle pressure at the insertion site is often helpful but not required. The catheter is then threaded over the wire into the vein. It is extremely important that the wire be advanced all the way out of the catheter until it exits from the brown hub before beginning to advance the catheter into the vein. It is absolutely necessary that the wire be held firmly while the catheter is advanced to prevent the wire from being lost in the vein. Once the catheter has been inserted to 20 centimeters, the wire is removed. The catheter can then be positioned at the appropriate depth. The catheter has markings indicating the centimeters of the catheter distal to the insertion site. 
Usual depths are 15 to 16 centimeters on the right and 16 to 17 centimeters on the left. Final confirmation of correct catheter placement is by x-ray. Each port is then aspirated and flushed with sterile saline. The catheter is secured in place by placing the catheter holder on the catheter and securing it to the skin with staples or sutures. A sterile dressing is then applied. A chest x-ray is obtained to look for an iatrogenic pneumothorax and confirm correct line position. The optimal position is to have the tip of the catheter in the superior vena cava at the entrance to the right atrium, but placement anywhere in the superior vena cava is acceptable.